Hi, this is Dr. Rick Goodman, and welcome to another episode of the Solutions Oriented Leader pod and video cast. And today I'm so excited because we've got a guest, someone that I've known for quite a long time, but never really connected with until I made my move. And some of you know about that move. And there he was, Paul Solitsky. Now, let me tell you something about Paul. So many coaches out there, executive coaches, they just put a name on it. They've never done anything, but they say, now, you know what? I'm going to coach people. I think I'm good at that. And the reality is, they're not. The best coaches are people that have done that, been there, done that, been in the trenches, done the work. And that's exactly what Paul's done. Paul was somebody who grew up in New York City, not far from Wall Street, went to Baruch Business School. More importantly, Paul was one of the heads of ADP sales. He was there for years and years, moved into a real estate business, did an amazing job. And then he decided his focus was going to be on helping other people taking his knowledge, transferring that knowledge to help people go to the next level. So I'm so excited today to have Paul here. And Paul, tell me a little bit about what you're doing today, how you made that shift. Yeah, so thanks, Rick, for, uh, for having me. Uh, just one, one correction. Uh, when I left ADP, I would have loved to have been in the real estate business, but I wasn't. I was in the recruiting business. And I think that's really important for the audience to know because I started a recruiting firm just by myself. And then we grew it to close to about 20 uh, recruiters with a focus in many, many different um, areas. And I spent 18 years in the recruiting industry and then ultimately I sold the firm to my associates, which was, uh, which was terrific for them. And obviously it was terrific. Uh, for me. And so That's then right. I was so obviously being in the recruiting business that gives you a lot of insight on people, their strengths, their weaknesses and, and placing people, you have to know what works for your client, so that you can grow, which is obviously what you did in order to sell the company. So tell me a little bit about what type of clients that you work with, and what specifically do you do for them? So in terms of the types of clients I work with, it's very, very varied. I would say it could be anywhere from um, a 20 year old junior or senior in college that is looking to land an internship, but does not know how to go about doing that. And that is one type of client. And what I do is help them put together a plan a strategy, and then we work very, very closely together because it's all about a plan and it's all about execution. So kind of look at me as a, I guess, an accountability partner um, that's with my clients to make sure we have that strategy. Uh, a lot of it is is how you present yourself on that interview. Um, it's, it's how you separate yourself from the competition. When, when you're looking for an internship role, there are dozens and dozens of people who are competing, if not hundreds of people who are competing um, with you. So that's, that's one type of client that I have. Another type of client I have is someone who is literally just graduated college. Maybe they're out of school for two years or three years. And they're kind of having some questions as to, is this what I really want to do in life? And so I'll give you a great example. When I graduated from Baruch College, I had a, a BBA in accounting and I was an accountant for three years. And then I realized I'm glad I did it, but I no longer want to be an accountant. I want to be in sales. And so I was fortunate after getting told no about 50 times, Paul, you have no sales experience. You will not be successful in sales. And that's you know, it was something that was obviously motivating to me. And ultimately um, I proved them wrong and I got hired by ADP. I started as a salesperson and spent 10 years with them. And I was fortunate to move up to an area of vice president of sales with well over a hundred uh, direct reports. But I, but I point that out because what I thought I wanted to do being an accountant and what I went to school to do being an accountant was not what I ended up doing. And I look at our 20s, though so from 20 to 30, as that's when we're supposed to experiment. That's when we're supposed to try to figure out what we like, figure out what we don't like. 
and then make the adjustments. Our 30s, 30s to 40s is when we take what we know we want because we've already experimented with what we don't want and we improve and we grow and we evolve. And, and that is so, so critical. Now, there are some people, of course, that um, know exactly what they want to do. They want to be a, a, a physician. They want to be a lawyer. They want to be an engineer. And that's great. And those people are fortunate and lucky. But the vast majority of people, 80% or greater, do not have an idea of what they want to do when they are a junior, senior, and they graduate college. So I work with a lot of those younger people to help them really understand. And I use a phrase, slowing it down speeds it up. And what I mean by that is, instead of just getting in your car as an analogy, just driving all over the place as to where your destination is, uh, that obviously doesn't make any sense. We wanna slow it down by really getting inside the person. Meditation is a big part of my life. I've been doing it for eight years not from a religious standpoint, I meditate every day. It gives me peace, it gives me clarity, it gives me presence and calmness to make good decisions. And so some of my clients want me to help them with that. Some of them have no interest in that, it all varies. But we really wanna slow it down and understand what are the superpowers that I have, my client has. And I use a couple of very respected assessments to determine that. So doing that tells us, here's what I love. Here's what I'm good at. Now, how do I go and use those superpowers that I have to go and find that career that's going to make me happy? A third aspect of my clients are those who are in the 30s to 40s and may have made some mistakes, may may have chose, chosen the wrong career. And so I kind of help um, re-navigate them to where they really want to be because even when you're in your 30s you're still so um, you have so much in front of you and so much time in front of you there's no reason to rush make the right decision slow it down choose the right position and a smaller majority of my clients are in the 40 to 50 um, group because a lot of them um, have figured out what they want to do by the time they're 40 up to 50. Mm -hmm. You know, you said some great things here, and we have a philosophy here that the brain at rest works best. You know, that's when you yeah. come up with your best ideas, not when you're really forcing it. But, but also, you know, I have this question that I ask people, I always say it's a great bar question. And I go to people 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, and I say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the answer I get 90% of the time is, I don't know. I know. I and know. I always say, you're not coming back. You may come back as a fisher of frog, yeah. but not you. And I believe yeah. we all have chapters, you know, and I remember having this discussion with my son and another friend of mine, Booster Cal, who's a, another speaker and branding expert. And both of us aren't doing what we went to school to learn how to do. I was a doctor, still am, you know, mm -hmm. I don't practice anymore. I've done mm -hmm. 50 different things since then. And he started out as a graphic designer and got built a big branding company and everything else. So what we start out doing isn't necessarily what we're going to end up doing. And I think that might be the most important lesson that you end up teaching people because they panic and they think that whatever they do, they're stuck with for the rest of their life. And you get to open their minds holistically and show them that it's not just what they're doing now, but they've got opportunities that they haven't even thought about yet. And things that they're going to track into their lives that are going to take them to the next level. So that's just amazing stuff. So how do you get your clients and how can people get in touch with you? Right. So... I think this is important. There's, there's five phases to how I work with my clients. Phase one is a intro call. It's generally 30 minutes. There's no cost for the call. It's free because I really want to make sure that I can be effective for the person because I cannot help everyone and there may not be good synergy. So the first call, free, 30 minutes. Um, you can go to my website, it's paul at paulallencareercoach.com. And Allen is my middle name. Allen is A-L-L-E-N. And so that's the first step um, is getting to know you and understanding whether or not I can be of help to you. The second phase is slowing it down to really go deep and understand 
What are your innate natural powers or what I call superpowers? What makes you happy? What did you love doing when you were a child? What do you really excel at that just you're in the flow when you do it? And that is a phase that is some people don't want to put the work into. So I, I will not work with them if they're not willing to take the time to slow it down to really understand what they're good at. Third phase is putting together the landscape, the strategy of who are the companies, what are the positions, specifically the competencies that I am interested in going after. So really, really understanding that. Fourth phase is putting together my toolkit. What is my toolkit? Toolkit is very important. It's your resume. It's what your LinkedIn says. There are 780 plus million people on LinkedIn. There's 15 million jobs on LinkedIn. There's no reason to go anywhere else um, other than LinkedIn. So resume, LinkedIn profile, cover letters, not just one because you need various cover letters depending on the position you're applying to. And fourth is your reference page, which is critical. We work with our clients to brand them and develop this toolkit. Fifth phase is going out and going on LinkedIn and teaching my clients how to use the power of LinkedIn to go and filter and find the jobs that exist out there that I am interested in. And it's a funnel. So think of a funnel of, is I got all these potential jobs. It starts out really big, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna narrow it down to the ones that really interest us. And little secret, we're not gonna apply for those jobs. We're not gonna go to human resources because human resources uses AI, artificial intelligence, ATS, applicant tracking systems. And we are going to go and find out who it is the person that I would be reporting to. Very easy to do on LinkedIn. I show my clients how to do that. I work with them hand in hand. We go, for instance, if I was looking to be a HR manager, then, and that's what I love. And that's what I think I really want to do. And I, we figured out that's what I'm good at, that I'm going to go to the VP of HR. I am not going to go to um, the press the button to submit your resume because you're one of 300 people. Fifth phase, sorry, sixth phase. Uh, there was one more phase because I had the complimentary call in the beginning. Sixth phase is getting ready for the interview. And that means mock interviewing, of course, role playing. 90% are on Zoom, Microsoft Teams. So we're really going to spend a lot of time on practicing for the interview so that we can really be unique and separate ourselves authentically, real, not, not BS, on the interview. And then the final phase is having the option to choose between two, three, or four offers so that we choose what's best for us, not, not what's best for our employer, our future employer. And so you're really not just a coach. You're a mentor, a trainer, a coach. You're, you're taking them right from the beginning of the process and making sure they have a full and deep understanding so you can push them on the end of that diving board throw them into the deep end with a life preserver on them so they won't drown, but they'll be successful. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a really good, um, that's a really good way of, of saying that. And, and look, I'm, I'm fortunate. I, I didn't grow up in a um, um, wealthy family that had all these privileges. I grew up on the Lower East Side, streets of New York City. So that those street smarts have, really helped me be able to um, transfer that over to my clients. But I've also been fortunate to work for several Fortune 500 companies, take startups from zero employees to 3,000 employees. So that, that street smart, along with just having the pedigree of working with Fortune 500 companies has, has really been something that's um, really been helpful to me. And yeah, we say always around here, we'll take persistence, over smarts any day because that persistence and dedication, street smarts, fast brain, whatever you want to call it, always succeeds because those people don't give up where other yeah. people stop short just of success. Yeah. And that's the hey. great thing about what you're doing. You're not letting anybody stop short of success. You're making sure that they're successful, making the right decisions 
and taking the time to make those right decisions also. Yeah, it's really funny you say that, Rick, because I used to have, and I, I don't know where it is any longer, but for years I had a little rock on my desk that said persistence prevails when all else fails. And um, that was just something that was really, really important because it is a numbers game. And, you know, you have to get past the fact that you are going to be rejected and it's not personal. People are busy. People have other things on their schedule, but we make it, we minimize the rejection by putting together a plan and going to the right people. And that's really the key. Right. And that rejection is just somebody saying, we want you to be successful somewhere else. That's the way we look at it over here. So yep. Paul, again, let us know how people can get in touch with you if they want to see you. We're going to have your website up. We'll have your email up. But but let us let the people out here know who are listening to the audio version of the podcast, the video version of the podcast, and everywhere where it's going to be on social media. How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so I, I will give you my, this is my personal cell phone number. I love helping people. It's not about the money for me. It's more about doing what's best um, for the individual. And so my direct cell phone mobile goes right to me is 954-608-2202. Of course, you have my email, paul at paulallencareercoach.com. You can go onto my website and there's a little, there's an area on to contact me where you can go to my calendar book a 30 minute complimentary free uh, session. Um, and then we'll, we'll jump on a zoom call and we'll talk. That's great. Well, Paul, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and putting it out there on how you can help others. You do an amazing job. And we want to thank you for being on the solutions oriented leader podcast. Go out there, keep making it happen. My brother. Good. Thanks Rick. To learn more about solutions oriented leadership, please visit our website at rickgoodman.com or feel free to email me at info at rickgoodman.com and please subscribe to the Solutions Oriented Leader on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to get your weekly episodes automatically.